All right, so I've actually posted this video twice. Once while stationary, and this version you're about to watch is the one that includes the road noise. They have slight differences because I didn't have notes while I was doing it, so you may want to watch both, but here goes. So for those of you that have been following me for any length of time, you'll know that I used to have a Winnebago Revel, which is basically a sprinter van, but converted into a camper by Winnebago. So I am now back in a Sprinter van, and this time it's a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter 2500 4x4 uh, passenger van instead. This is exactly the same platform that my uh, Winnebago, which was a 20, it would have been a 2020 um, Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van, but it's still this same generation of Sprinter van, and it was an, a 4x4 as well. So I am now back in a similar vehicle and this time without the camper outfit. The idea here is to do it myself this time um, and I don't want it to be a complete camper. I want a, some kind of an in-between of a, uh, a passenger vehicle with the capability of camping. You know what I'm saying? So it's not going to be a full-on camper build with all the trimmings. It's going to be more uh, something that I can use when you're going skiing and you want to take a bunch of friends, you can put a bunch of people in the back and then still be able to uh, camp every once in a while if it's just you and another person going. So that's the idea of this build and we'll just have to see how it comes along. But that's not what this video is about. So this video is one of my quick reviews that I like to do as soon as I pick up a vehicle, right? Before I, I sit down and I try to convince myself that it's worth it, that yeah, I should have paid 20 grand over MSRP, which is crazy. Um, but that's the only way to get these vehicles right now, unless you're one of the rare, super lucky ones. Every, every once in a while you luck out. This time, that wasn't my turn to luck out, it was my turn to pay the piper, so, uh, and paid the piper I did. Um, but again, not what this is about. This is me getting into the vehicle before I've had an opportunity to sit there and try to justify my purchase and tell myself, oh yeah, this was totally worth it. What are my first impressions jumping into the vehicle? So, all right, this van compared to the last one has the automatic side door. And you know, it's convenient, but I think I would rather just shut my own door. I don't know why I feel like that, but I feel like that's one of those things that's gonna cause me problems in the future. But for right now, well, it's brand new. It's got five miles on it, so it's still working. Um, I like that step that comes out when you open the door, but I feel like one day I'm going to be off-road and that step is going to get caught up on something. But, you know, for right now, it works out just fine. Okay. Another thing is, the things that I do like about this vehicle so far that I've noticed is the lane departure assist. In my Winnebago Rebel, it felt like it wanted to kill me. You know, like you're going off road and instead of it just beeping, maybe a little vibration off the steering wheel like normal cars or gently leading you back onto the road, it used to do this very jarring thing where it absolutely just yanks you back the other way or applies the brakes or it, it was extreme, whatever it was doing. This doesn't do that anymore. It seems like it beeps, like you guys have heard it beep a couple of times, but there's no real yanking to the opposite direction, right? So I like this and I think this is operating a whole lot better and I don't know if I've said that, but this is a 2022. Um, what else? Driving. The Winnebago Revel as a built-out camper, of course, it's not gonna be comparable, right? That was very, you know, tipsy. As a passenger van, I do not feel like this is tipsy at all. It's It actually drives really well on the highway. So I'm driven on the interstate and I'm currently now driving on side roads. I can merge, I can weave in and out of traffic. And this is the diesel. I do not feel a lack of power at all, but again, there's not a lot of luggage or anybody in the back. So um, I should hope that it performs good right now, right? So that is that. But the van itself, it's nice, it's good, it smells new. I love that new car smell. But uh, it's running good so far, honestly. I, I love it and I think it's gonna make a nice platform to build off of. And I can't wait to actually get into the nuts and bolts of it all. 
the acceleration is actually pretty good. Like when you push, when you punch down the gas, it does get up and go. Now this is the last year that they're gonna make the four x four, and also the last year that they're gonna make the uh, the six cylinder diesel. So the next year or next year, 2023, they're coming out with a four cylinder diesel, and it'll be all wheel drive. And I think there's different schools of thoughts on all wheel drive. Personally, I think I like all wheel drive, right? You don't have to fiddle with it. It's just always on. It turns on when you need to. Uh, if you are going to do some extreme off-roading, which this is a van, I don't know what kind of extreme roading or off-roading you'd be doing, but if you are going to do something like that, it may get a little bit challenging. But honestly, for uh, the kind of driving that most people do with these vans, I think all-wheel drive is going to be a welcome change, right? Right now with the four-wheel drive system in this, in order to engage four-wheel drive, you have to you actually have to stop, push the button, wait for it to engage, and then you'll be in four by four. And a benefit to that, I guess, is it's actually like real legit old school four by four, and it has a lower range on top of that. So that is the benefit of that. But I think I would trade that for the all wheel drive because I don't know, I think that's just, it's good enough, you know, for what I would intend on doing in a van. If I had a Jeep, I get it, you know, I'd want the option for 4x4, but in a van, I think I'm, I think I'm fine with all-wheel drive. But uh, anyways, those are my first impressions of this vehicle. Um, tons of seats in the back, I don't have that many friends, so I don't think I'll ever fill it up, but um, I look forward to kind of doing some test runs with it, load it up with some gear, cargo, um, and see how that does. Some things on the outside. Owl gear, you know, roof rack. They got this cool roof rack now that actually has the wires routed into the uh, the roof rack itself because it's got poles that come down the A pillar, so you can actually route wires for your roof lights and whatever else not you want to electrify on the roof, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, owl ladder tire carrier in the back. Um, I feel like that's a must-have, and then. Uh, you know, a couple of other things, a winch, uh, CA off-road, or CA tuned off-road, hammerhead bumper in the front with a 12S worn winch, and uh, I don't know, some LP9s, some of those super <laughs> crazily priced uh, lights, and uh, I think we're going to need a whole host of them. I just want to, uh, that, so this that's the intention of this build, just kind of turn it into a nice overlanding um, camper you know and not necessarily just overlanding but just a nice camper that you can go skiing and you can go camping in every you know like a weekend camping trip or something like that so that is what I've got planned for this but for right now um, I'm gonna conclude this this was just a hey just pick this up and this is how it operates so far so good I love it I love the way it drives it honestly drives very good I talked about the tipping back and forth. Um, the Winnebago Revel was very tipsy, you know, like you go over uh, where you're going from, you know, like sometimes it's a curb, or not a curb, but you got a driveway and it's got a little bit of a hump in it. It would literally sway so bad, like it felt top heavy. This does not feel top heavy at all. This actually drives really well. If I wasn't sitting so high, I'd be in a sedan or something because that's how awesome it drives. Um, I like how high you sit, uh, speaking of that, I like the height, you know, I'm almost at the same level as truck drivers, I can, you know, they're just slightly above me, right, but when I look over, we can, we can make eye contact, so that's actually pretty cool as well, so I love the way these 4x4 vans sit, um, the tires, yeah, the tires have to go, so you can put something a little bit beefier on there, like a BF Goodrich KO2, I think that's what everybody does. And uh, I think it's a good looking tire. I don't think I was running that on my Revel. I don't remember what I ran on it, but uh, I'm gonna try the KO2s this time. But I just want a slightly bigger tire so it just looks slightly healthier than what the vehicle looks like right now, you know. Um, but um, that's about it for right now, guys. I'll be, just watch out for more videos. There'll be more videos coming out on the build for this. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I'm also gonna do a walk around after I stop probably at the beginning of the year, just do a walk around of the vehicle, um, 
there's not a lot of videos out there of people talking about you know when you're sitting in the bag at this height what does it feel like you don't you don't see a lot of you actually don't see a lot of content on passenger vans unless it's um, um, the dealerships usually so I'm gonna try to put out some videos out there so we can kind of bridge that gap a little bit and uh, uh, if you're interested in that kind of stuff this is uh, where it's gonna be but until then I am actually starving uh, I've been traveling so landed and went and picked this up and now I'm going home so uh, until then peace so yeah one other thing to be concerned about or interesting one other interesting thing just as I'm driving this is when you stop you can kind of hear some sloshing around in the bag like like I don't know if it's a gas tank or what is going on with that usually gas tanks are ba uh, baffled so you don't really hear the liquid going back and forth so it's a little interesting but I'm curious what that is and uh, uh, figure it out sooner or later I wonder if those of you that have passenger vans are able to hear the same thing in my last sprint van that Revel, I didn't I didn't seem to ever hear that or well, I don't recall ever hearing that and making a point out of it so but uh, that is interesting.